Welcome to Coming Alive, a podcast with Barry Michaels and Phil Stutz, where you'll learn actionable tools to fight the habits that sabotage you so that you can become the person you're meant to be. Hi, everybody. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what a tool is and how to use tools, I thought I'd record an introductory podcast with all of the frequently asked questions we get from people who are learning the tools for the first time. This will serve as a handy introduction to the tools, which you can come back to whenever you have questions about what you're doing and whether you're doing it right. What is a tool? Everybody knows what a tool is. It's a jerk with a hugely overinflated ego. Just kidding, but not completely, because every once in a while, Phil and I get called the tools guys, and we really don't appreciate that. Anyway, a tool is a simple technique that bridges the gap between insight and action. You know why you have your problem. Now, how do you change it? The answer is with tools. You use a tool whenever you're stuck, and if you use them every time you're stuck, You unlock your potential and enable yourself to become the person you always sensed you could be. It's likely you're already using some form of tools in your life. You might meditate or chant to induce a relaxed, clear state of mind. You might use visualizations to increase the likelihood of getting what you want in your life. One difference between these techniques and our tools is that the tools we teach are very quick. Once you get good at them, they take less than 10 seconds to use. This is important because unlike meditation and visualization, you'll be using the tools at the very moment you're experiencing a problem. A delicious dessert is beckoning and you have to resist. Your boss rejected your pet project and you have to get over it and come up with a new idea. Your teenager is freaking out and you want to de-escalate the situation. What's the best way to learn a tool? In our books, we walk you through each tool step by step. But before you get started, remember this. When our patients learn a tool for the first time, they often worry that they're not using it correctly. They have a picture in their minds of how it's supposed to feel, and when it doesn't, they give up. Please don't overthink the process of learning tools. Just read the tool over a few times, then try to use it as often as you can. If you want to make it even easier on yourself, record the tools on an electronic device so you can practice them without having to read the words. If you were learning a new piece on the piano, you'd have to practice it over and over. The tools are the same. When you're learning them, practice each tool until you can remember it without struggling. Then you can start using them. But be careful. Don't start with situations that are really challenging. For example, if you have an eating problem, the first time you use the tool for self-control should not be when you're standing in front of an all-you-can-eat buffet. You're just setting yourself up for failure. Instead, start with smaller temptations, or even just imagine a temptation you might have to face in the next 24 hours. If you practice each tool on these less challenging situations, you'll eventually be much more successful at tackling the larger ones the ones you've never been able to deal with in the past. Once I've learned a tool, when should I use it? Each of the tools comes with a set of cues, situations where you should use it. If you've read our first book, The Tools, you know that you should use the reversal of desire whenever you find yourself procrastinating or avoiding something. Similarly, we've given you a set of cues to accompany the four tools in our second book, coming alive. In that book, for example, you should use the black sun tool whenever you find yourself tempted to act impulsively, whether it's eating something you shouldn't, breaking your concentration to answer a text, or overreacting to someone who's provoking you. How often should I use tools? The answer is simple, as often as possible. I use tools multiple times every day. Not only does it prevent me from falling into bad habits, it does something even more important. It reminds me that I am in charge of my own state of mind as well as my own behavior. 
And over time, as you feel more successful at regulating your thoughts, feelings, and behavior, you gain an incredibly fulfilling sense of mastery. You become the embodiment of this aphorism by Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism. He who conquers others is strong, but he who conquers himself is mighty. Isn't that an awful lot of work? Yes, but it's even more work if you don't use tools. If you're in the deep end of a swimming pool, you could say it takes a lot of work to tread water, but it's a hell of a lot easier than sinking to the bottom every few seconds and having to push yourself back up again. In other words, it's the kind of work you get used to. It becomes as unnoticeable as any of the other self-care habits you engage in, like brushing your teeth, showering, exercising, dressing yourself, and so on. What if I can't visualize well? Will the tools still work? Definitely. Personally, I'm not very good at visualizing. So when a tool calls on me to visualize my shadow or the archetypal mother or the black sun, I don't actually see these things as much as I simply feel their presence. And that's absolutely acceptable. And I want to repeat what I said earlier. Don't stress over getting the tool right, quote unquote. Learning to use tools requires doing, not thinking. Don't analyze whether you're doing them right or even if they're working. At first, it might not feel like they're doing anything. But if you simply use them again and again, you'll find your life expanding in ways you never thought possible. Which leads to the last question. How is it possible that just by using a tool repeatedly, my whole life changes? The tools work because they allow you to tap into forces you aren't ordinarily aware of. In our first book, we called them higher forces. In our second book, we lumped them together under one name, the life force. But truly, it doesn't matter what you call these forces or even if you're skeptical that they exist. You can't prove the existence of these forces the way science can prove the existence of a molecule or the way it can measure the force of gravity because these forces don't exist outside of you. They are inside you, and they're purely subjective. Forces like courage, honor, love, in fact, most of what makes life meaningful, exist in an inner realm. In that realm, you know something is real not because you can observe it objectively, but because you feel it. You would never require yourself to prove that you love your child. Indeed, there's no objective criteria by which you could measure that love. You know it's real because you feel it in your heart, exploding with a kind of warmth and goodwill you've never felt before. Similarly, the only way to validate the existence of these forces we're talking about is the experience of them, the felt sense that something is helping me through a situation where I've always been stuck. So we encourage you, don't judge the effectiveness of the tools based on whether or not you believe philosophically in these forces. Just use them and over time, see if they work. We're not looking for converts to some sort of dogmatic philosophy. We're looking for something much more important. We want to unblock you so you can fulfill your potential. If the tools can help you do that, we don't really care how they did it. And neither should you. This is Barry Michaels. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Feel free to contact us at info at the toolsbook.com with any questions you'd like to ask us or with suggestions for guests or topics for future episodes. Also, check out our website, thetoolsbook.com, where you'll find a treasure trove of information about the tools, our books, and upcoming workshops, and where you can sign up for our inspiring newsletters. Again, that's thetoolsbook.com. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you'd take the time to review the podcast on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and tell your friends about it too. Talk to you next time.